cue the 80s music. Hey guys, Brony General here back with another video and you're probably wondering why you're looking at this wannabe Altair 8800. <laughs> no, this is not an Altair 8800. This is better than an Altair 8800 because it can actually do something. Altairs can't really. No, this is a K-Pro 2X. And, and I dropped the keyboard, but that's fine because it is all metal. I, I'm not joking, this is, this is all metal. The computer is too. But this is a 1984 portable CPM running computer. Now if you've been on my channel for a long, 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 long time, you'll know what this computer is because I did a review on it a long time ago, but that left uh, much to be desired. I'll just put it that way. <coughs> Anyway, this computer is a bare-bones basic business system of the time. You've got two 360k floppy drives, uh, an entire 64k of RAM, a 4 megahertz, I believe, Zilog Z80 processor, no expansions, no upgradability, a green phosphor CRT screen, CPM, blah. Now, what this thing lacks in hardware, it makes up for durability. As I told you before, it's all metal. The back of this is metal, too. And it's not thin metal. Look at... It's kind of hard to see, but that's not thin. This computer is, is an apocalypse survivor, I swear. But I bought it at first because it looked cool. And because, well, I knew what it was. It's just... I I bought it over an IBM 5155 because it looked cooler and it had a uh, excuse me green phosphor CRT. Looking back, I don't regret it, but at the same time, it'd be cool to have a IBM compatible because you can actually communicate with them with computers like that. Like my modern PC over there, this one you can't. It, Windows just doesn't know what CPM is. But let's boot it up. If it was plugged in, it would probably help. Anyway. Plug it in. Now, there you go, you have that little LED lighting up, floppy seek, and waiting for the CRT to come up. And there we go, it says, please place your disket into drive A. Luckily, I have all my diskets right here. Yeah. Alright, so let's take out K Pro Disk 1. I believe is this one. Yes. Now this is a K-Pro 2X. These discs are for universal K-Pros. K-Pro 2, 2X, uh, 4, and the 10. So if I place that in the drive, it will seek, and there you go. We're in CPM. Now what can you do with a computer like this? Well, I'll show you. I don't know how I'm going to end up getting these discs out because it's honestly really hard to get them out with one hand. Oh, I know. This is a stand-up floppy drive, so I, a stand-up floppy disk holder. So I can have them like that. Which, yes, this is an official licensed K-Pro floppy stuff thing. I'm going to set a floppy stuff. That makes sense. But you can put K-Pro 10 Disk 3 in to drive D. And go to your B drive. Oh, whoops. B, shit, there. There we go. I wish the camera liked to focus on green phosphor CRTs. It doesn't. So I can go directory. By the way, yes, this keyboard feels amazing. You know, it feels similar to a Commodore 64 keyboard almost. Or no. It feels more similar to a Commodore PET keyboard. That's what it feels like, a PET keyboard. The later PET, not the early PET. Uh, but anyway, I've got Zork 1 through 3 on here. So, well, why not play Zork? Actually, no, because that's not really that much visual, is it? I believe disc 4 here has uh, Donkey Kong on it, though. So, Or at least CPM version of, of Donkey Kong. So if I could put disc 3 back, which as I said, it's not easy. 
and get out disk 4. As you can see, there's no directory, and if you hit directory again, seeks the floppy again. Uh, Apparently, it's not on disk 4. There's only Elisa and Basic on disk 4. Unless I put it in upside down, which I didn't. So is it on disk 5? I don't remember it being on disk 5, but it might be. Um, no, it is not on disk 5, so it must be on disk 3 or 4. I know it isn't on disk 2, because that's a utilities disk. Let me figure this out, and I'll see you guys. Okay, it was on disk 4, that just wasn't seeking properly, but here we have, if you can see right there, ladder. So let's just go on ladder. Fluffy drive is kind of loud, but not too loud. Very unique sounding fluffy drive. And there we go, we're on ladder. Um... I believe it will go into demo mode after a minute because it's going to be impossible to play this game with an actual with a phone in my hand. You know? So we'll just wait here for a second and see if it goes into. Um, here, I guess I can show you the back of this thing while it's while I'm waiting for it to go into demo mode. This keyboard weighs about five pounds, by the way. For being a portable, you would think they'd make this out of plastic or heck, even fiberglass or something. Not metal, but whatever. It only weighs about 40 pounds. I'm not, I'm not joking, and I have taken this thing to school on multiple occasions. But on the back here, you have serial printer output, J3, J4 serial data I.O., and a J5 parallel printer output. That's useful. That's useful. I haven't found use for that yet. I have my keyboard port, which, yes, it's just an RJ11 phone line. And this line, which is like a phone line, but wider, but it's not an Ethernet. I don't know what this is. It's not even plugged into anything. It's just there. As you can see, it's a K-Pro 2X manufactured in the USA. And if I can find date code here, I don't think I can. Anyway, I also have this fan in here. This fan is aftermarket. There was just a plate covering this hole. I just I wanted a little more airflow in here, so I put a fan in there. You got a fuse here. Um, oh yeah, there's the brightness for the CRT. Covering dust. I don't use this thing in a little while. It's actually been blowing dust all over my chairs or my uh, footrest, as you can see, from being off for so long. It doesn't like being off. But uh, aside from having the K Pro on all its discs, I have one more cool thing. And apparently this game doesn't have a demo, so I guess I'll just show it to you real quick. So, oh, play game. As you can see, it's Donkey Kong, but text. Because that's a good idea. Okay, I can't remember. Okay, you use the um, number keys to control yourself. Okay, I can't, I, I can't reach space to actually hit it, so I, I, I'm dead. I'm just going to... Kill myself. As you can see, I'm the little P running around and the barrels are the O's. So, eh. Oh well. You get the point. It's actually a really fun game when you're playing. It's insanely hard if you can get past the easy street level. <coughs> but aside from having one K Pro 2 and one packet of K Pro 2 discs. I also have, if I take this stupid weight off of them, not Cox Digital World, I don't care about that. I have Cave Pro Data Star Reference Manual. I have Cave Pro Calc Star User's Manual. All of these books right here, all of those are Cave Pro manual books. From the small to the big, they're all for the Cave Pro. I not joking, I got all of this with the K-Pro. 
which I haven't had time to look through them all, but they are kind of interesting, just like, well, what what was the average user getting when they when you picked up a K-Pro in 1984? But it's actually pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. I'll see you guys in the next one.